I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, let's take a look at some news and notes from the NFL and just some perplexing news. I don't know what to tell you. First of all, Andy Reid commits to Alex Smith for 2017. Says, I think we can win with him. Did you watch that game, Andy Reid? Did it look like you were winning a Super Bowl with Alex Smith? Maybe you're going 12 and 4, 11 and 5, 10 and 6. Real good chance of making the playoffs. I grant you that. I absolutely grant you that. You winning a Super Bowl with this guy? No. Guy's going to be 33 years old. He's a game manager bus driver who doesn't put enough passing yards. And you've got Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Jeremy Macklin. You've got thoroughbreds, right? Imagine you have three thoroughbred horses in your stable, okay? So this is Reed Stable. I'll call it Big Tomato Stables. Big Tomato Stables. And you've got three thoroughbreds. But the jockey that you choose to ride the horse in the races is like 66 years old and doesn't want to go too quickly. How many horse races are you going to win with that? I don't want to go too quickly. I'll just I'll just keep galloping along. Now, if the horse happens to do, to do well, well, so be it. That's probably on the horse, not on the jockey. If the Chiefs win, nobody ever leaves, leaves a Chiefs game going, man, that Alex Smith, he was a difference maker. Man, that Alex Smith guy, he changed everything. I've never heard that of you. I heard, man, Alex Smith cost us this game. Man, Alex Smith uh, sucks. That I've heard. But I haven't heard Alex Smith has helped us win this game. So, great job there, Andy Reid. Great job. Guy stinks. Doesn't stink. He's mediocre. I I open up the dictionary. I I I say, where's mediocre? Oh, there's a picture of Alex Smith right there. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Mediocrity. Chiefs ain't winning next year. Chiefs not going to the Super Bowl. Don't kid yourself. Not with Alex Smith at the helm. You don't just get better. You just don't pick it up. Doesn't happen that way. Next, Bill O'Brien fires George Godsey, his offensive coordinator. And now he thinks that he's probably going to be the offensive coordinator, according to Aaron Wilson, who I trust. By the way, the Houston Chronicle has two of the greatest beat writers in the business. One, uh, John McClain. And two, uh, Aaron Wilson. Great jobs. Great jobs. And their information is dead on. Now, Bill O'Brien is putting himself really in the hot seat here. Why do you want to get that close to Brock Osweiler? Do you think you're going to make a difference? First of all, Brock Osweiler stinks. Secondly, I'd rather have offensive coordinator so when Brock Osweiler continues to stink, I just fire the offensive coordinator. But I think Bill O'Brien just wants to get out of there. So maybe he thinks the fastest shuttle bus out of Houston is to work with Brock and say, I've thrown up my hands with this guy. He sucks. And maybe that's the plan. Bill O'Brien goes in there. He's the offensive coordinator. And he says to Bob McNair, dude, I even was the offensive coordinator. This guy's hopeless. Sucks. Get rid of him. I mean, I guess that's got to be the plan. That makes a plan to me. It makes perfect sense to me. But, I mean, the Houston Texans, dare I say, I'd rather see Alex Smith on the Houston Texans. Alex Smith would be like an upgrade. And you know what I think of of Alex Smith? Mediocre. You know what I think of Brock Osweiler? Suck. In the dictionary next to suck is a big picture of Brock Osweiler, all six foot eight of him. Guy's awful. All right, Jimmy Graham expected back in Seattle. Good. 
I mean, he's owed a lot of money, but he's a good player. Came off a tough injury, and he played pretty well. How about get him the ball more? How about use Jimmy Graham more? How about they didn't go to Jimmy Graham enough in the playoffs? Anybody else think that way? I know I did. Next. Ian Rappaport from the NFL Network says that trading Tony Romo is the Cowboys' number one priority. So I was trying to think, where could he go? Where could Tony Romo go? Could he go to the Cardinals? Yeah, but they still have Carson Palmer. So I don't think Arians is trading for Tony Romo. Atlanta, no thank you. Baltimore has Flacco. I think the Buffalo Bills make a lot of sense to me. Buffalo Bills make a whole lot of sense. And and I think it's going to come down to something like this. Tony, Brock Osweiler stuck in Houston. They have a big contract there. Alex Smith is back in Kansas City. You want to get out of here, I've got three possible choices for you. Bills being one. I'll tell you about the two others in a second. Panthers, no. Bears, maybe. Interesting. Let's write that down. You hear that pen click? So I got the Bills. I got the Bears. I'll keep going. Is he going to go to the Bengals? No, I got Dalton. Is he going to go to the Browns? I don't see it. That's a reclamation project. Cowboys? Uh, No, there's Dak. How about Denver? Oh, yes. The Broncos. The three Bs. Bills, Bears, Broncos. Detroit? No, there's Stafford. Green Bay? Yeah, right. Uh, Houston? I don't think he goes to. Indianapolis has luck. The Jaguars are committed to Bortles. The Chiefs have said no. The Rams have Goff. The Dolphins have Tannehill. The Vikings already spent all their picks. New England has Brady. The Saints have Breeze. The Giants have Manning. How about the Jets? That's another team where he could go. The Raiders with Carr, the Eagles with Wentz, the Steelers with Ben, Chargers with Rivers, Seattle with Wilson, 49ers, really? I don't think so. Tampa Bay with Winston, the Titans with Mariota, and the Redskins with Cousins. So you have four legitimate places he can go. Firstly, the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills have a pretty good defense. They are not that far away from being competitive. I really don't, I really think so. They've got an excellent running game with McCoy, Gillisley, and this kid, Jonathan Williams. They've got a star receiver with Sammy Watkins and another guy who won't kill you with Robert Woods. They can get by with Charles Clay. I think it's a destination for Tony Romo. I do. Now, the problem is he's going to be in a division with the Dolphins and the Patriots. Good luck with that. Good luck with that, Tony. And he's going to freeze his buttocks off in Buffalo, especially the bad back. Good luck. Good luck warming up there. Good luck warming up in Buffalo in December. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a little cold. How's your back? It's a little stiff, you think? With that in mind, the Chicago Bears are interesting to me. Matt Barkley played well, but we know Jay Cutler is a train wreck. Train wreck. Could be a landing spot for Tyrod Taylor, just saying. Jordan Howard is legit. Alshon, Jeffrey, Cameron Meredith, Kevin White, not bad. Zach Miller, there's some pieces there. But once again, how is Tony going to do in Chicago, especially in the same division as Aaron Rodgers? Good luck making the Super Bowl. Keep up the good work. Now, the Jets are just an unmitigated disaster, but this is a Jet move for you, right? The Jets always like to make a splash in the back pages. See, the Giants don't worry about splash. That's not what the Giants do, but the Jets always need to make a splash. Matt Forte, LaDainian Tomlinson, Brett Favre. The Jets always get these guys like five years after their prime. Tony Romo. Tony Romo goes to the Jets. He plays there three games. He breaks something. He's done. Come on. You know it and I know it. Maybe he gives them a smidge of credibility. Maybe. Maybe he can handle the market. Maybe, maybe Tony's like, well, look, if I have a good year, I can make a whole lot of money in the New York market. I guess it could work because Fitzmagic is gone. Geno Smith stinks. Bryce Petty stinks. And Christian Ackenberg is a hack. So Romo to the Jets makes a whole lot of sense to me. Too much sense. And then finally, the team that is the obvious leader in the clubhouse 
for the services of Tony Romo, the Denver Broncos. But here's the underlying question. How much does John Elway like Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch? Now, Paxton Lynch took in the first round. He showed that he wasn't terrible. But if you bring in Tony Romo, you're not bringing him in on a one-year deal. There's no way Tony Romo signs a one-year deal. So Tony Romo is probably signing a two-year deal. If you bring in Romo for two years, now, first of all, you know he's not making it two years, but that's beside the point. Does it stunt the growth of Lynch? Or do you get rid of Simeon? Simeon goes to the Bills or the Bears, whatever, who cares? Romo is the quarterback. Lynch learns from Romo. Romo inevitably gets hurt. Lynch becomes the starter. Lynch learns for six to nine weeks until Romo is done. Romo stays, maybe he makes the playoffs, maybe they make a Super Bowl run. That makes the most sense to me. But John Elway is going to have to part with Trevor Simeon to make that happen. Because you can't have Simeon, Romo, and Lynch. You can have Romo and Simeon. You can have Romo and Lynch. But you can't have Romo, Simeon, and Lynch. So, could I see Tony Romo going to the Denver Broncos? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me too. I think the three destinations that make the most sense are the Bills the Broncos, and the Jets. The Jets for publicity, the Bills because they're just not happy with Tyrod Taylor. And by the way, if I were the Buffalo Bills, I'd bring Tyrod Taylor back. I would. And the Broncos. So I saw enough in Simeon last year to say, not terrible, right? First year, 3,400 yards, 18 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. That's not terrible. Had a couple of good games. Had a couple of bad ones. But you know what? Better than Cody Kessler. This guy's 25 years old. Went to Northwestern. Not like he's an idiot. Guy's a bright guy with a good arm. I think there's a spot in the league for Trevor Simeon. I do. Whether it's Cleveland or Buffalo or Chicago, I think he works. And you know what? If I'm Trevor Simeon, how about I go to Arizona? And I go to the bench there behind Carson Palmer, who inevitably is going to be done. Go learn from somebody. Go learn from somebody and better yourself. And then you come back and you realize, you know, you could be a quarterback in this league. I think you can. All right. The last bit of football news for today. Well, a couple. A couple more. First of all, Jordy Nelson's still very up in the air about whether he's playing or not this week. I think he's going to try, but man, it's a long shot. Obviously, if they make the Super Bowl, he plays. But right now in this game, I don't know. Do they need him to play? I think they can win this game without him. It'll be easier with him, but they can win it without him. Secondly, J.J. Watt ahead of schedule. That's good news. That's That's very good news for the Texans. They need him. How good? How good is that? defense going to be with Clowney. Seriously. How good is he? Is that defense going to be with Clowney and Watt and Marcellus? Woo! All right. Now, the other piece of news I want to talk about today. Ian Rappaport, once again, good chance Chip Kelly is named the Jaguars offensive coordinator. Can somebody tell me why? Why? First of all, I'm Doug Marone. Why do I want an offensive coordinator who can upstage me? I don't. I don't have any interest in him. None. Zero. Not. Secondly, Chip Kelly, Oregon coach, genius offensive mind, goes to Philadelphia and wrecks that team with a wrecking ball, goes to San Francisco and is putrid, and now the best you can do is Jacksonville Jaguars offensive coordinator? How about this? Let me paint you this picture. Go to some college football show on CBS or ABC or ESPN and announce for a year. Wait for a job to open up. And all of a sudden, you'll end up back in West Virginia. Coach of West Virginia Mountaineers. Boom. Great job for you. Want to go to Maryland? Be a Terp. Boom. Big Ten. I mean, come on. That makes too much sense to me. Want to go out West? Sure, they'll fire somebody. Boom. 
You'll be in Arizona. There you go. Chip Kelly should be in college football, not pro football. You know, Steve Spurrier wanted to be a pro coach. And he got to the pros and you know what he realized? Yeah, I don't think so. I'm the old ball coach. I'm really a college guy. He was smart enough to get out. I respect that. Chip Kelly's just not smart enough to figure that out. So let me write you a memo. Dear Chip Kelly, you're an idiot. Go back to college. You were better there. You were a star. You've been a disaster in the pros. You haven't been successful anywhere. And none of these guys want to listen to you. So resurrect your career. Begin your life again. Find a good college campus and enjoy life. Love, Dr. Roto. There you have it. Prescription note for Chip Kelly. Get out of the NFL because you're just not ready for the NFL or the NFL is not ready for you. I'm serious. I'm serious about that. I think it's a disaster. All right, so there we have our football news of the day. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff out there. And it's pretty big games coming up this weekend, so we're looking forward to that. Of course, NBA DFS is going on. So where do you go for your NBA DFS news? You go to scoutfantasy.com. You enter the promo code ROTO. That's R-O-T-O. You pay for one month, we'll get you two more for free. Simple as that. When you get there, you can use our NBA optimizer. It'll be free for another short while. Okay, pretty good stuff. I highly recommend it. Next, you create our articles, NBA articles from Nate Weitzer. How about Adam Ronis and the message boards helping you set your lineups right before a tip-off? How about NHL with Mr. Pucks? Cappy, James Capone, and our guy Kick. Kickman does a great job too. Both those guys do a sensational job when it comes to NHL. And I've got to tell you this. Seriously, we were talking about it this morning. Sean Childs does our team outlooks for baseball. I'm just trying to eyeball this. I'm going to say this is like 5,000 words. I'm looking here at the Tiger the Tigers. So here's his thing. He gives an overview. Then he goes down each player in the order. So he's got Kinsler, J.D. Martinez, Cabrera, Victor Martinez, just Justin Upton, Castellanos, McCann, Tyler Collins, Jose Iglesias. Then he gives us some bench guys. Ghost, Kristen Stewart, Avia, Romine, Jacoby Jones, Stephen Moya. Then he goes to the pitching staff. Verlander, Fulmer, Zimmerman, Anil Sanchez, Daniel Norris, Matt Boyd, Tyler Alexander. Then he gives you the closers. K-Rod and Ron Doan. Alex Wilson. I mean, this is tons of stuff. I call Sean beast mode because that's what he does. He writes a ton of it. It's really good. And I'm seriously going to read every single word of it before my draft coming up next week. Every word I can find. Because I know I'm going to win if I read it. It doesn't get better than that stuff. So I encourage you, go to scoutfantasy.com, enter the promo code ROTO, R-O-T-O, pay for one month to get two more months for free. We will prepare you for your baseball draft, and we will prepare you for DFS, whether it's NHL, PGA, NBA, MMA, whatever. We're there for you. All right, but right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. We'll be back tomorrow with another podcast. News, notes, all the things that you need to help you win your fantasy leagues, whether they be seasonal or daily. That's how we roll. All right, guys, have a great day. Be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit scoutfantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!